Hello everybody, just a quick addendum to this video before it actually begins. Um, this was recorded months ago, back when LJ and I were able to watch a rather low quality version of the Ninjago episodes on YouTube as was provided to us by a fan. We recorded this immediately after watching them, very late at night, but opted to hold off on releasing this coverage until the episodes were available in better quality for, you know, the internet to watch and comment on as it was intended by the creators. So, now the new proper updated links, now that they have been released on different websites, will be in the description below. We hope you enjoy our review. Nothing more needs to be said. End nope. coverage. See you guys next year. That, that was pretty good. Yep. Adios. So, hello and welcome to our coverage of episodes 33 and 34 of the Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu TV series. So, without further ado, I, 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 we're recording this like five minutes after we just watched the episodes. So I'm kind of in a state of shell shock. And we, yeah. we have to judge through episode 33 first. <clears throat> so, episode 33, The Void. Well, Jake, give us a recap, please. So, The Void starts off, Ninja are in space. The weirdest sentence to ever be uttered on this channel so far. And that's saying something. Ninja are in our space, and they're in a compartment of this, the spacecraft. In about five minutes, that's going to detach and leave them stranded in space. Lost in space. Not the movie. Zane, they figure out Zane is the only one that can get outside of the spacecraft and not die. Well, he gets outside and it starts floating off in the space, but using his deus ex ice powers, blasts himself back. They get some extra suits, space suits, and they get on board the ship. Antics ensue. Nindroids attack, blam, 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 blam. They get more or less pinned down. Cole nearly flies out in space. And this is all heading toward a huge, uh, what's it called? A shooting star? A comet. Asteroid? Comet. It was, the, it was the golden mega weapon, stupid contrived time travel comet. That's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're heading toward that. They head into the tail of the comet, which has a bunch of debris, and they're trying to debris all the ninja off. Well, they crash land on the comet. Nindroids take off. Get to the melted pile of golden weapons. It's about as broken and misshapen as that entire episode was. <laughs> uh, the ninjoids get there. And the ninja follow shortly after on, like, a Land Rover. And all of a sudden, there's this little bug, and it flies around, and Jay gets it. I'm gonna call you Glowy! Well, they, all this time, they've been in contact with Nia, Sensei Wu, Sensei Garmadon, and company back on Earth. And they're trying to tell them, don't deal with any of the, the space creatures there. Well, they do. Turns out, Huge swarm of these bugs, they eat metal. A.K.A. the ninja suits, the ninjoids, and Zane. Well, things work out. Antics ensue. Awesome. Awesome chase scene. Like a car chase. It was as the ninjoids well are trying, trying to get away with the, the golden pile. Lots of slow-mo flips. Yeah, and explosions and blasting. That was a cool car chase. Things seem to be working out for the ninja. They get the uh, the ninjoids space shuttle start key from the ninjoids and go back to the ship in order to get off of, of this comet and just leave all the golden weapons and the ninjoids behind. Turns out little glowies ate the ship. So they're stranded and the ninjoids say, bye guys, take off anyway with all the golden mess and that the, the episode cliffhangers there yeah it's a pretty pretty ominous place to cliffhanger yeah 
all the main characters about to die, eaten alive. I would say that was a very, very edgy way to end if it weren't for the next episode. Okay, next episode. <laughs> well, first, That's first, our... first, let's oh. talk about 33. Yeah. 33 was very interesting to me. Had a lot of crazy shenanigans, and yet I think it was handled pretty well. I agree. The golden weapons are as stupid as ever, but I've kind of accepted it, and I'm not going to complain about it because everything else is so good. Uh, the glow bugs were interesting. Chase scene was good. There was this one hilarious scene where, like, Mindroid flew back. He tried to grab a rope to save himself. <laughs> But he flew yeah. and he flew behind the rocket exhaust and got burned alive. <laughs> it, it, was, it was quite it was quite brutal. Not even going to lie. I love it. Yeah. He flies off the ship and he grabs on this thing and it's like oh, Mindroid, you're okay. And then he dips down behind the thrusters and boom <laughs> Yep. Torched. That was the highlight yeah. of the episode. Uh, it was the funniest thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like I like this episode for a couple reasons. I like both these episodes for a couple reasons, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, that is, they give they finally after like the entire season. Yeah, Zane has had a couple moments, and he has been important because of the Nindroid thing, whatever. But he was heavily marketed as being the main character. And there's been a distinct lack of him doing main character things. They crippled him early on by, like, cutting his power in half with Pixel. And I always questioned that decision. Um, so finally in these two episodes, he's doing things. Things that nobody else can do. And driving the plot forward. And being deserving of that status. So I appreciated that. Yeah. And then humor was good, plot was good. It was a pretty self-explanatory episode. It was good. Yeah. It was better than that one episode in the Digiverse, which had kind of a slow start and slow mm-hmm. in general. But then we get to the next episode. Well, well hey, hang on. I got to say, by episode 33, major props to the head writers of the show. You guys made a lemonade out of lemons that was the whole time travel golden weapon Thingamabob. I will concur. I will, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say they, they made lemonade out of rotten lemons. There we go. Yeah, that that was spectacular. Which is, yeah. Turning a less than stellar plot point into an okay plot driving force that moves things along very nicely. I do applaud you for that. Yeah. And Fantastic. speaking of applause... Oh, my Matt Nelly. There was applause at the oh, start. Oh, goodness. And that was mainly I I, for the second episode. I, I, I do not know if I can do this. No, I can do this. I have to do this. Yes, you do. It's, it's, it's your destiny. The penultimate recap. This is what you uh, uh, This is the true recap you're destined for. <laughs> episode oh 34, The Titanium Ninja. Go. <clears throat> so to start off, antics ensue. And the ninja have hooked Zane up to the rocket ship and are having him more or less power it and hold it together. Because of his mysterious power source. Nobody knows what it ever is. But because he's at half power or whatnot, like if he reaches a certain point, or like critical mass, then like... He could go kablooey. So they make it into the atmosphere of Earth. And the ship blows apart. And they manage to make their way back down using elemental shields. Apparently just like their elemental powers shielding them or something. I'm not sure. I would say that's a bit of a reach. But considering what we just saw, I'm willing to accept it. Yeah. So... They make it down to Earth, they get caught by all their vehicles, the vehicles are back in action, and meanwhile, Overlord has totally and completely melted down the golden pile and turned it into his golden armor. He has a body now, and now he has the golden armor, which is huge. 
and he has the power of the first Spinjitzu master. And he's like reshaping the entire city of Ninjago like he did during that one episode. Um, Enter the Digiverse. Mm -hmm. It is pretty crazy. You know, his, yeah, his place, his rules, that whole thing. And he turns the city of Ninjago into a fortress. So the ninja get in and they're jumping all over the place. Nia gets like beaten down. And then, oh, what happened next? Nia gets beaten down, and they're all scrambling to go look for her. Bam, Sun Overlord. And they're like, oh, snap. Well, uh, Cyrus Borg, Cyrus Borg, he was in a temple. Yeah, it's the set. A temple which could defend. It has a shield which could defend against the golden power. Apparently it was used so the by the Overlord and the Stone Army. When fighting the Spinjitzu Master. At least that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, I believe that was the case. So the ninja scramble back to get there as the the overlord is spinjitsuing a huge tornado all around um all over the place. And he's following the ninja. Ninja make it in just in time, shield goes up there safe. Meanwhile, Nia is getting the snot kicked out of her by the general. <laughs> and then Mindroid comes to the rescue. I think it was Mindroid. That that was one of the parts where it cut off for us. So I didn't really see if it was Mindroid or it not. It was a Mindroid. It was a Mindroid. I'm not sure if it was the one that got destroyed. But Are, are we sure about that, I'm though? I'm positive. Are you sure? I okay. saw it. I saw the leg. She's safe. And I guess he was like, fed up of the bad treatment. <laughs> So I didn't take action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thrusters were the last straw. <laughs> anyway, she gets saved. Golden Master goes off to do his own thing. And meanwhile, in the temple, the ninja get stone army armor, which will defend them against the, go the, the golden power. So, yeah. They get that, shield breaks down, Nia to the rescue in a tank, and the ninja bust out. They're going after the Golden Master with a weight loss pill. Cyrus Borg, Deus Ex, Maka pill, which basically, long story short, shrinks you. Antics ensue in that discussion. It's very funny. I do not exactly know oh. what shrinking him would do to stop his powers. Squish him. I, oh, that's very brutal. Yeah, well, ninja. I, I thought his body was like made of a purplish, smoky substance, <laughs> or is that just a cape? Oh, I think that was just a cape. Sigh. Okay, carry on. It's a cool cape. Anyway, so they go after him to shrink him down. They find him, and he's he's like, gosh, dang it! Why isn't my power working? So he starts attacking the civilians at the suggestion of Pythor. Well, since they, they get to a certain distance, he's on a web. He's become a spider at this point. He's on a web surrounding the main tower that this series started off on, like this season. And Sensei Wu and Garmadon are like, we can do this. We were children once. We played baseball. They do an uh, epic uh, maneuver. I uh, 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 forgot the snakes. Oh, snap. Yeah, I forgot. So, Golden Master is throwing a bunch of things at the civilians. And then the snakes, the stinking snakes from the last season, come up from underground and go like, In here! And they lead humanity down into the sewers to save them. It's pretty funny. <laughs> that was It's funny. come full circle. I remember when the skeleton army came to help fight the Serpentine, and now the Serpentine <laughs> are coming to help fight the Overlord. Not fight, but assist. Yeah. So, epic maneuver done by the senseis. The pill goes flying. It's about to enter the overlord's mouth. Just then, deus ex, Pythor. He jumps in the way, eats the pill, shrinks. And then Zane's bird starts chasing after him, and that's the last we see of him. Sucker. He's... Definitely going to be back next uh, next Considering season. Considering what the we sets know. Or anything. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's not the last we've seen of him. Anyway, so that happens. All hope seems lost. The ninja are gonna are being picked up by the golden web tentacles. All hope seems lost. Zane escapes. He jumps back. He jumps back. I know, Beastie. It's, it, 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 this part, this part gets bad. Anyway, <laughs> he jumps around. He avoids the golden tentacles, and he's like, "Friends, support me one last time." He like jumping on them, like stepping stones. He's jumping toward the golden master. He jumps at him, gets caught in the golden armor's claws, and starts overloading. And starts getting so icy and starts freezing the Golden Master. He basically does a Nova Blast. Yeah, effectively. And then it starts happening. You start hearing music. Uh, Sad music. Uh, and then you see Zane. His Half his face falls off. Mm. It's like he's crumbling to pieces. The Overlord is freezing. Things slow down. And you see his his memories of all the good times and his friends and all the funny instances that happened in the old season. And they drag it on. And then he blows up. He creates in what Bionicle is a Nova Blast. And <laughs> he's done. The Overlord gets defeated. And a good chunk of Ninjago is frozen, and Zane explodes. And then you see all the other ninja that hid in the sewer very temporarily in order to escape the ice. They come up. And you see, you see someone pick up that half of Zane's face. It's, it's the most morbid thing I've ever seen in Lego. <laughs> it's gruesome. It's horrifying. And that's it. They killed Zane. And to make it worse, they cut straight to a funeral. <laughs> they do. They cut to a funeral, and they're saying, like, a bunch of things. And Cyrus Borg saying a bunch of stuff, and he unveils this huge statue of Zane, the Titanium Ninja. The title. And Zane, yep. And Zane's hawk uh, flies on the shoulder. Kai says a few things, and it starts the snow. Yeah. Cut to the tower. Dareth was even there. Dareth was crying, but, you know, that's Dareth. Cut to the tower. Here we have Pixel, who's been fairly unusual this entire time. I guess she just, She's I guess in the she tower. just stayed in the tower because she didn't want to go. It was sad. Yeah. Enough. Well, I mean, her entire character is unusual. Yeah, well. So, anyway, she's in the tower. She's sad. All of a sudden, the compute, the TV screens around her start start saying things. They start showing clips of when her and Zane first met, and starts saying clips of the things they said. And she runs off to the conveyor belt room from like one of the first few episodes with all the saws and the cranes and things. And they allude to Zane basically being in control of the Digiverse or being in the tower. Yeah. And it ends on a quote from Zane saying, Are we compatible now? Done. <sighs> Holy granola. That singular episode has elevated this show so much in my eyes. As if that was like even. <laughs> it's as possible. I really like this show, but you. It's been all they did it. It's one thing to kill a character on a kid's Lego TV show. It's another for it to be a main character. It's another mm -hmm. for it to be on screen <laughs> and be as brutal as it actually was, even though, you know, he, he was a robot, whatever. It still counts. And he was still our friend. Yes, exactly. And yeah, okay, they kind of brought him back, but not really. It still counts in my eyes because we do not know the circumstances of his revival specifically. Obviously, yeah, they'll probably try to get him a new body eventually, but for all intents and purposes right now, he is he is dead. Mm -hmm. I have two things to say about this, and then we'll get into why it's so good. First of all, why is it always the ice guys? <laughs> First Matoro, now this. 
<laughs> remember Zane. I don't understand. Remember Zane. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, I just recently watched a show. I know so, some of you may have heard of it, some maybe not. It's called it's an anime called Tengen Topa Gurren Lagan. I'm not going to spoil anything. People died in that show. I watched it in very close proximity to this. Too many deaths. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> dies. Deaths everywhere. I can't get... Ah. But, you know, it was it was masterfully, masterfully handled. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very impressed by its execution. But, you know, before we go too crazy on that, talking about some other positive things the episode did. At first, I was a little put off. There were so many deus ex machinas. Between, oh, we can use Zane's power source to repair this rocket and fly it out of here. And, oh, we can enter Earth's atmosphere with our elemental shields. And there just so happens to be a, a house that can protect against the Overlord. And there just happens to be armor that can protect us against the Overlord, and there just happens to be a pill that can shrink people, and there just so happens to be that Zane can do all this crazy stuff to the Overlord, but I think it was all handled pretty well. I was worried that the diet pill thing was actually going to be, like, serious, but I think they handled it very, very smart. I knew Ninjago was too smart of a show to defeat their main antagonist like that. So it was very humorous. Yeah. Uh, it was Pythor that got affected. <laughs> Pythor. I, I, uh, he got so screwed. In he this. really did. I, I uh, greatly appreciate yeah. the handling of that. And I do like how, you know, when I see that set battle for Ninjago City, I've always wondered, why is that building, why does it look like that? when it's Battle for Ninjago City, and it's supposedly in the midst of a city. The architecture doesn't mesh, but it made sense after watching this episode, because it was an older building that was used by the Overlord way back when. So I like that, and also the silver armor. Why do the minifigures have silver armor? Well, now we know. It was the Stone oh. Army armor. I had a different guess for why Lloyd did, and I was right. Yeah. But. So I appreciate little touches like that that show that the sets were based around the story to a T, even minor details like that. Like, they didn't just make that set like that because everyone wanted, you know, Japanese-style architecture again. They did it because it had story relevance, and I, I appreciate small touches like that. Yeah. And of course, you know, I'm, st I'm still in a state of shock. Still got to talk about that end. That was incredibly, incredibly bold. I hope it pays off. I appreciate risks like that. And it bodes especially well for a Bionicle TV show. Because that shows there is a certain level of maturity they're willing to take it to. Like no one's ever. I really hope. I really hope that the people who do the Chima show and the Ninjago show can just get together. They can all get in the same room if they don't already and just go, okay, we've been hired to do a Bionicle TV show. Let's mix Chima and Ninjago. Uh, the the world and the, you know, kind of not necessarily world building, but you know what I mean? The atmosphere of Chima with all the tribes and whatnot and villages and then the plot and characters of Ninjago would work very nicely anyway continue well no I'm, I'm gonna bounce off your point it's a little I'm, I'm a little worried the people that do this these shows will not be doing a bionicle tv show and tinseltown tunes or ghost will be handling it oh yeah to which that could be okay but i have a lot more faith than these people yeah i don't know i think i've said my piece it was incredibly well done, very fitting conclusion to this year's storyline. I am very interested in the future of Ninjago, and I guess now we know why Zane doesn't have a set to call his own in the next year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, wasn't there one missing set that we're not... No, we got in the name of it. Oh, what was I updated it? the description. I think it was just... Uh, 
Let me go find it. It was nothing. It was not a ninja vehicle. It was another one of the lava falls, jungle trap kind of set. But that's what are your thoughts on this finale? Okay. I've seen a lot of finales. Really, I have. Uh, for a lot of different shows. Bones, Castle, uh, you know, Ninjago, Uchima. Uh, I'm trying to think of some yeah, others. Right. Uh, even yeah, House. Am I right? Be quiet. So, uh, but this... Okay, yeah, I, and sorry, Legend of Korra. Kahi would disagree with me here when I say this finale rivals, in my eyes, several several Legend of Korra and um, the Last Airbender finales, to me at least. It's really well done. It's very well handled, at least from what I think. The pacing was very nice. It gave Zane so much story relevance. And it had a lot of really great... It hits you. It hits you right there. If you watch this series, you get attached to these characters. That hits you. They took a huge risk, and I really hope it pays off. That was incredibly well executed. It didn't make the viewer feel like they were just there. They didn't make the people watching go, uh-huh, uh-huh. It wasn't just a mindless entertainment thing. It was very well executed. They put a lot of heart into it. They, they treated it, the entire show, the characters, and the viewer with a lot of respect. And I like that a lot. Even if Zane is technically still around as a computer... His overall presence is practically not there. And that is an extremely huge risk to take on a character you promoted incredibly yeah. throughout the year. Major risk. I hope it pays off majorly. It was just incredibly impressive. A really great finale. And easily my favorite episode of Ninjago. I will concur. Easily. Uh, I, I I would like Chima to do something like this. They won't. I, I mean, I I know that they're two different shows. I know that they have two different goals, but it would be nice to see. Yeah. I don't Death, because it's like killing characters off left and right, that doesn't necessarily... That's not a good way to handle it either. Death in and of itself does not a mature show make. It's the way it's handled. And I think this was a shining example of how to do it properly with legitimate emotional impact and not just, oh, they died, whatever, let's move on. Yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing where the series goes from here. Will Zane be like a mentor role from the computer? Will they find him a new body? Will he stay gone? Many questions. Many answers. Will the Overlord be back or... Did the Nova Blast kill him for, forever? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yeah. why it would. If Zayn got into the Digiverse, he could do it again. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know. We will. We will cover the new season of the show whenever it premieres, probably next year. Hopefully, it has more than eight episodes. Even though I think eight episodes was plenty for this season without dragging it on. Pacing was very nice. Yeah. And considering the 2015 sets equal out with Chima, I think Ninjago is back to the level of prominence that it deserves, and that is a very good thing. Ninjago is the thing I'm clinging on to for hope that a Bionicle reboot will be handled properly. Yeah, or even a continuation. Or even a continuation. Oh, goodness. Thank you all for watching. Leave your thoughts on the Ninjago rebooted season finale below. And stay tuned to TTV for more news, reviews, coverage, etc. Thank you all very much for watching all of these coverages, and we will see you next year.
for more Ninjago. I'm Masanak. I'm LJ. And goodbye. <laughs>